Hello, everyone, and welcome to Get More Clients. I'm your host, Lynn Whitbeck. Business owners and entrepreneurs hire me to ignite winning sales because most are chasing down leads, lack client retention, conversion, and profit. The mission of this show is to educate, inspire, and motivate women and men around the world to build a robust sales strategy to get more clients because many can't get more clients and haven't a clue why. You will learn to transform thinking to the client's perspective, eliminate the lengthy chaotic sales cycle to ignite your sales and unleash lasting profits. You'll also have the opportunity to connect with me further to see how I can support you beyond today. Now, yesterday I was in a mastermind and one of my good friends, I, just out of the blue, he brought up that one of his favorite old time TV shows is Bewitched. And I went, oh my gosh, I loved that show. I watched that show so much. I remember watching reruns and reruns, you know, as it would go on, you know, whatever, Nick at Night or whatever it happened to be. And it really brought up, you know, in my mind, um, all the great episodes and how many of them tied into sales. And you may think, what the what? <laughs> um, but, you know, Bewitched was one of my all-time favorite TV shows that I would watch. And this classic show, it primarily revolves around the magical life of Samantha Stevens, and she's a witch, and her mortal husband, Darren, who happens to be an advertising executive. So that's a little background for you. And while the show, of course, was focused on you know, the comedic and fantastical elements, you know, because of the, the, it was just, it was the comedy of a witch and a mortal, right? And the magic. Um, there are many times where the characters really used persuasive techniques that could be interpreted as a form of stacking yeses, which is what our show's about today. And furthermore, not only to stack those yeses, but to achieve their goals without ever resorting to manipulative or sleazy tactics. So there was a specific episode I'm thinking about. It's called, And Then There Were Three. And Darren, remember the mortal husband, he's trying to secure a client who happens to be Mr. Perkins. And, you know, as I mentioned, Darren is an ad executive. So he's wants this business for his advertising agency. Now, Samantha uses her magical abilities to help him create a series of circumstances that encourage Mr. Perkins to agree with Darren's ideas. So even though Samantha's actions are whimsical, they are a version of stacking yeses because she's creating that opportunity for yes, yes, yes. And with each favorable outcome, it paves the way for the final agreement. And, you know, I have to tell you, while the context of Bewitched is fictional, and I already said it's a comedy, the underlying principles of effective communication and persuasion are observed in so many of the episodes because there's a lot of them around Darren getting business, right? And they really showcase the importance of genuine engagement and agreement in achieving goals. Now, last week, I had the wonderful Leslie Nason with me, and we shared three reliable negotiation techniques where everyone wins. And I just want to note that with many B2B sales, you do negotiate while closing. So that's the twist, right? And we do cover negotiation first because it provides the framework so that you can close more effectively. So you guessed it, today we're going to be talking about closing, specifically how to stack your yeses and win more clients. You know, when you are exclusively focused on ethical and effective sales techniques, stacking yeses is a powerful approach to close sales without ever using manipulative tactics. By the end of today's show, you're going to know how to identify the signals that indicate your client is ready to buy, how to use low impact and summary questions to stack your yeses, and to navigate the client needs and any concerns that emerge during the discussions. The key is to genuinely provide value 
and focus on the prospect's needs throughout the entire sales process. What's their why? Why does it matter to them? So they can. At every stage, you're continually asking these questions. And beyond building a strong relationship that's based on trust and understanding, stacking yeses will lead to more sustainable and success successful sales outcomes. So I want to take one step back and, and to, be, to really give you a quick recap of when to close versus negotiate. And so I've already mentioned that that entire sales process is about creating value for your clients. You know, what's their why? Why does it matter so they can? Closing enables you to deliver that value while negotiation lets you claim value, okay? So you deliver the value with closing and you claim the value first when you're negotiating. So I'm gonna give you three examples. When your client expresses needs, you close by addressing and satisfying those needs. Example number two, if your prospect expresses objections, you sell by discovering and answering the root cause of the issue and you resolve the concern with benefits. And this happens both in negotiation and in objections. Now, on example three, now, if your prospect rejects your offer and makes demands, you need to negotiate. So, this can actually happen when you're starting down that closing path, but you discover that there's something you need to go back and address and negotiate. The demands indicate interest, right? Because they are interested. They're asking for something and you need to find the common ground before closing. So that brings us to our number one topic for today. When are you ready to close? So I really want to be clear, closing the sale starts at the very beginning of the sales process, because all the time you're working to build your credibility, your trustworthiness, your competence, what it's going to be like to work with you. You're answering the client why at each stage, why it matters to them, what's in it for them, so they can what, what can they achieve, what's the big goal, the initiative. And it's the point really that intersects where your hard work and all that preparation intersect with trust and rapport and you're ready for closing. Now, I want to take one caveat here because I've seen firsthand the pitfalls of trying to close too soon. And the risk is that the client will think the process is over and they mentally shut down and move on to something else. Oh, well, there's that darn cough. And my second point is that you have to be confident and believe in your product or service. If you don't believe in what you're doing, what you're selling, how it helps and serve others, the impact you're creating, you need to find another product or service to be selling. There's this inner flame that burns when you know that you can solve a big problem for your clients, when you can truly help and serve them and create impact, whether it's for them personally, for their team members, for their business, for their clients. So there are a number of signals that indicate your client is ready to buy. One, they're going to display positive body language and interaction. They're going to have an open stance. They're going to be nodding. They're going to be smiling. They're going to be looking you in the eye. They're going to ask questions. And number three, after you handle an objection, they are going to nod and smile using that body language and perhaps ask another question to our confirmation that that answered the question that they had had. So even if you receive buying signals, I do want to point out that the client may still not be quite ready. And this is normal. It often takes several closes to actually close the sale. And if you force the issue, 
you can lose the deal altogether or damage the relationship. So that's where stacking your yeses will come in. And sometimes you may want to take a break so that you give the opportunity to nudge the sale in the right direction with those stacking the yeses. And it helps you and the client reevaluate and make sure that you've addressed the client so they can. How is this going to truly help and serve them? What, why does it matter to them? What's the goal, the initiative? the pain point that's going to be solved. And that means making sure that a no doesn't mean that it's over. It means that you have more concerns to address or that the timing is just not right. Remember, a no is just not now. Or you haven't answered all my questions. You haven't addressed my concerns. So you really want to ask the client, what they need to commit and then provide that to them. So stacking your yeses, this is our big number two point for the show today. This is vital. It is a true proven process to close more sales. And it is my favorite method of closing the sale. And you're going to stack these soft close yeses. And this is a process that you can use all the way through the sales cycle. And it also ensures that you're hearing the client's input because you're asking a question and you're getting the yes. So that positive reinforcement and acknowledgement. Now, the trick is to ask low impact and summary questions to build and reinforce on all the reasons your service will serve them so they can. Now, I've already mentioned this, but you got to have this burning belief in your service and your ability to make a significant positive impact for your client's business or for them personally, for their team, for their community. Because that enthusiasm, that passion, that belief positions you to close the sale. You know, that that enthusiasm and that passion and those beliefs, they're contagious in a very positive way, right? And when you believe that, it transfers to the other person. They get that, they feel more comfortable because you're so confident. You're so positive. <clears throat> Another key point is you always want to assume that your client, your prospect is going to move forward at some point and become a client. And once again, this is literally putting that positivity out there in the universe. This is what you expect. You expect them to become a client. You expect them to a yes. So I'm gonna walk us through now how you stack your yeses. So you want to build agreement gradually step-by-step. Present smaller commitments or steps that your prospect can agree with along the way. Each agreement creates momentum toward the final decision. Now, a way that you can do that is, you know, this is really simple, but if you're looking at, you're working with somebody, let's say in a high-end boutique and they come in and they you ask them how you can help them. Are they looking for a particular item to add to their wardrobe? And they said, well, I'm looking for some pants, right? You could ask, you know, do you prefer a wool or silk or linen pants? Do you have a specific color in mind? These are ways that you can start to stack those yeses. You're building on these smaller commitments. Like, yes, I really love silk, no linen. I don't like how it wrinkles. So that steers you in the right direction. And you can see how you're moving that through the process. So that's a real simple example. Now, during this process of stacking your yeses, you will want to periodically summarize the key points of your conversation. Because once again, they've agreed to a certain thing. So they've agreed that they want silk pants. They've agreed that they want them in a dark color, preferably black or navy. 
right? So now when you re you restated that that's what they're looking for, it really re um, reinforces that this potential client, your future client, that they they know that you understand what they're looking for and the value that you're offering will keep them engaged because you're you are engaging in this stacking their yeses and in this conversation. And once you've built up a series of yeses and the prospect is aligned with your solution, then you ask for the sale directly, but respectfully. You're going to use confident language and make it clear you believe in the value you're offering. You know, this lovely pair of black silk slacks is going to last you for years and going to be a staple in your wardrobe. You want to use um, cash or a credit card, right? Or Apple Pay or Google Pay, whatever it happens to be. So when you're in this process of stacking your yeses occasionally, you're going to uncover a need or requirement that you had not discovered in earlier sales conversations. So this is our third point. You're going to need to navigate those needs and concerns. You're going to need to navigate needs <laughs> and any concerns. You're going to use the same techniques that we've been talking about in every episode. You're actively listening. You're giving them that positive reinforcement that you're listening. You're nodding your head. You're smiling. You're using open body language. You're going to be asking open-ended and probing questions to understand the specifics of anything new that's emerged, whether it's a pain point, a challenge, or a, a goal that you, they hadn't mentioned previously. And if your prospect expresses hesitancy about making a decision, you're going to inquire about the factors that are influencing their choice. You know, perhaps they're concerned that the, the care for those silk slacks is going to be too arduous or too onerous, right? And you want to address those concerns openly and provide additional information if needed. Now, <clears throat> how you're providing that information, it could include valuable insights and information that specifically address your client's concerns such as, oh, these black silk slacks can go right into the washer on the delicate cycle, and then you hang them to dry and they're going to be ready to wear. They're truly ready to wear. They, they uh, you know, they work great, whatever that is, right? I'm, I'm riffing off this slack thing for retail. How funny, but it's really a short list of all the different things that may be relevant, such as industry trends, could be success stories, or data that aligns with their interests, that answers that concern, that addresses it. And if your prospect raises any objections or concerns while you're asking the questions, don't dismiss them, right? That's going to hold you back from closing the sale. This needs, and it's also setting you up for failure down the road. If you somehow railroad over that concern, is not going to be a stable, strong, long-term relationship. Instead, you're going to address their concerns and you're going to be very direct about this because you want to demonstrate that you're genuinely listening. You hear them. You share their concern, their, the, the fact that they're concerned. You share their feelings. And you're interested in finding a solution that works for them, that makes sense to them. And so there is another um, episode of Bewitch that sort of showcases how to use, you know, this idea of addressing concerns and uh, objections and bringing everything together. And it's called Samantha's Thanksgiving to Remember. So I'm on this whole Bewitch thing. Um, and Samantha stacks yeses to get her family and Darry, Darren's overbearing mother to agree to a peaceful and harmonious Thanksgiving celebration. And through planning and understanding, Samantha creates an environment where each member agrees on certain elements 
which ultimately leads to a successful family event. And while not a sales scenario, this episode truly showcases how you can stack yeses in all aspects of your life. So sales happens every day. It happens every day, whether you're working directly with your client to close the sale and move that forward, or you're deciding what you're going to watch on Netflix. You're negotiating, and then you're closing the sale as to what it's going to be. So sales is just part of the life force and life nature of what we do every day. Now, with the stacking your yeses, I'm going to go ahead and give you one more walk through an example of how you would stack your yeses. Because it's so important that you sort of see how this works. So back in the day when I sold printing, so there's a lot of different things that go on in printing. There's different types of paper. There's different types of printing processes. Um, there's different finishing techniques. So a great place would be to ask, would you like that on 80 pound cover weight or do you want it to be a little bit heavier on a hundred pound cover weight? And they'd say, oh, I want the heavier stock. I want a hundred pound cover weight. Would you prefer a matte or a gloss finish, right? So they're going to say, you know, now the, the matte or the dull finish, it is going to scuff up more, but it's got a really, there's another possibility as well. A third choice, which is a velvet finish. It doesn't scuff quite as much, but it has a really great feel. But the glossy has that really bright, shiny uh, look to it. And they'll tell me, oh, you know, I really do like the velvet. You know, I don't like the glare that comes off the shiny. So I just stacked my next yes. And would you like to have rounded corners on this or, you know, whatever the next part of that project would be, right? How would you like this to be folded? Do you want an accordion fold or do you want a Z fold? You may not know what an accordion or Z fold is, but once again, I'm stacking those yeses. I'm moving them through each stage where they're determining what the product, the finished product is, how it's going to be manufactured and what it's going to look like. And then now on the last time that we worked together, you ordered 5,000. Is that still a good quantity for you? Or would you, I know that you ran out very quickly and had to reorder. So perhaps 7,500 or even 10,000 would be better for this time around. What quantity do you want? And then it's like, oh yeah, you know, you're right. Um, we did run out really quick, but I don't think I want to go with 10,000. Let's do 7,500. Now with that, you see how I stacked my yeses? All of a sudden when they say, yeah, I want 7,500, let's do 7,500. I just closed the sale. I just closed the sale. I stacked my yeses all the way through. And I said, great, we'll get this started and I'll have proofs for you in two days. Done, right? So stacking your yeses leads to very effective closing methods. And we're gonna talk about that next week because after stacking my yeses with my client, I always ask for the sale, all right? If you don't ask, you don't get. You've got to ask for the sale. And you know, you can ask with an assumptive or a choice question. So I made both an assumption and a choice in that example. Last time you ordered 5,000, but you ran out early. So would you like to order 7,500 or 10,000? I'm assuming they're going to place the order and I'm giving them a choice. And you can also use a direct, the direct closing method. There's a lot of different ways that you can do that. And Next week, I'm going to do a deep dive into the types of closes, closes. So stay tuned and join me next week. You know, when I've invested and when you've invested the time to build your client relationships, you've created a foundation of trust and credibility. You've been just hammering on that like, know, and trust factor all the way through. It's the journey that you're taking together and you've been delivering value to establish yourself as an expert and a reliable partner. 
and you deserve the sales and you're going to stack your yeses and close the sale. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. You know, my purpose is for you to get more clients. Bottom line, don't make this harder than it has to be. Sales should be a win-win. And on behalf of Petite to Queen, I've carved out a limited number of time slots to invite you to hop on and ignite your sales call with me to see what's working, not working, and what you would love to have working. I'm going to see how I might further support you in effectively generating more leads, converting more sales, and fulfilling on your promise as a brand and organization. The fastest way to success is to assure people know that they matter. And the best way to make this happen is to build a consistent sales strategy to acquire, convert, and capitalize on every lead. You will find growing your business is easy and lucrative. Today, we looked at how to stack your yeses and win more clients. The key is for you to implement these steps to stop wasting time, energy, and resources. You have the opportunity to jump in and get the support you need for true success. Say yes to you and get on a call with me. I am really, truly gifted at this and you deserve a shortcut to your success with the right support. You can go to pdq.link forward slash win-win. That's pdq.link forward slash win-win. And you, when you work with me, everything we do is designed for immediate on the fly implementation and for individuals who are committed to taking action to move their business forward. To learn more about all of our services, you can visit our website at petitetoqueen.com. You can also connect with me on our website and to stay current on all of our insightful advice, our breakthrough advantages, and never miss an episode of Get More Clients. Sign up for our weekly wisdoms newsletter at petitetoqueen.com. Now, next week on Get More Clients, I will be discuss discussing getting to yes, the best three closing methods to win with integrity. Make sure you don't miss a single episode by subscribing to Get More Clients wherever you get your podcasts. And if you love the show, Please share it with your friends, your peers, your family, and give us a five-star review. We would very much appreciate it. I'll see you next week on Get More Clients.